Hello, I'm David Hart, Executive Vice President at the Florida Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to another edition of the Florida Chamber's Bottom Line. Our special guest today is Representative Matt Caldwell. Representative Caldwell, welcome to the show. Thank you, David. Appreciate being here. Chairman, you have uh, three priority issues you're working on this session that happen to overlap perfectly with three Florida Chamber priorities. One that we've worked on together for two years now is the comprehensive statewide water bill. It looks like this first week of session that bill's poised to pass the Senate and be sent back over to the House. Can you share just a few key concepts of what you hope to accomplish with that bill, given that we know that by 2030, given the growth of our population, we're gonna need 28% more water supply? Sure, absolutely. It's no secret that water is a key component to our success here in Florida. If we're going to grow as an economy, uh, we need to have that as a reliable part of the uh, development pie, and that uh, is a big part of why this bill is important. But it's also important because natural resources are a key component to that growth as well. People value the landscape, they value the state, uh, whether it's ensuring long-term uh, supply in Central Florida, uh, restoring the springs in North Florida, as well as uh, the Everglades. Uh, this bill goes a long way towards accomplishing all of that. So I also want to ask you about um, an issue called assignment of benefits. Um, at the Florida Chamber, we've seen pretty dramatic increases in fraud in this particular area with claims of water damages on people's homes. Sometimes they've happened, sometimes they haven't. Uh, sometimes it's minor damage and it ends up getting uh, reported to an insurance company as a much more expensive or costly repair. What are you seeing in that area and what is your legislation on assignment of benefits hope to accomplish? Uh, absolutely, this is an issue. Uh, fraud uh, has clearly grown. Uh, people are abusing uh, a system uh, over the last few years that has uh, ballooned uh, payments in uh, for damages uh, that, as you said, might be very minor but then are made to appear much, much larger. Uh, all of that cost is going to be passed on eventually to consumer and uh, people across the spectrum agree that there's a problem here that needs to be solved and uh, we're going to try to address it. Well, I, I applaud you for tackling fraud. We stand ready to help in any way possible. The third area I want to ask about is an issue we've uh, worked on for quite some time as well and you've had a passion for state pension reform. Our state pension system uh, has an unfunded liability somewhere north of $20 billion, probably worse given the way the stock market's performed in the last week. You and the speaker have long held uh, the view that we need to make some reforms to our state pension system to protect taxpayers. And so tell us what your approach is this year and what can Florida Chamber members do to help? Well, we, we certainly in previous years have tried some pretty ambitious uh, reforms. Uh, some of those have passed, uh, but most of them haven't. Uh, we haven't always seen eye to eye uh, with uh, our partners across the hall. Uh, this year we're pushing strongly for a change in the default, and that is uh, when a state employee is hired, uh, they get to make a choice whether to be in the pension or in the investment plan. And today, if they don't make a choice, they're placed in the pension automatically. Uh, now, since most state employees don't work the minimum seven years to vest, they actually never receive a retirement of any kind from the state. Uh, so just on the basic question of fairness, we think we ought to default those folks to the investment plan for that reason. Uh, but also philosophically, uh, we believe the investment plan is the future. Uh, that's the way that most of corporate America operates nowadays, not on a pension. Pension is a very 20th century model. And so we want to try to transition our state workforce in that direction. We thank you for your leadership on these three important issues. We look forward to the trifecta of all three of them passing by the end of session. And to our viewers, thank you for joining us on another edition of the Florida Chamber's Bottom Line.